Good evening to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday, the 9th of October edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Uh, in today's video, I want to look at the interplay, the complex interplay between tropical cyclones and the mid to high latitude jet and pattern. And uh, we have got quite a, a, an interesting situation uh, evolving here because we've got um, quite an active tropics, if you notice here. We've got three systems in the East Pacific, we've got two in the West Pacific, an invest in the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, and we've got uh, Tropical Storm Jerry, which is struggling somewhat. Um, but it's how these systems then activate and interact with the jet stream, the ridge trough uh, situation as well, and uh, the transfer of heat up into the Arctic region that may send the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation negative and what implications that may have. Now, we've got this area of high pressure that is in the building process over the UK and Ireland. It looks as if it's going to become pretty anchored over our part of the, the, the world over the next, uh, you know, good 10 days or so, you know, building through the latter half of this week, into the weekend, and they last and through much of next week as well. But there is indications that that high will slide west-northwest and perhaps allow something more, uh, you know, more of a chill in the air, so to speak, towards the end of this month. We are seeing um, both uh, NACRI and uh, Typhoon Halong um, going to be moving northeastwards, and that's going to create a, a significant jet extension out of uh, Asia across the North Pacific, and it's going to start to reshape the pattern over the North Pacific and in turn, that interaction between these two tropical systems will then strengthen the jet, and that will create a chain reaction over North America, the Atlantic. And I think that's going to what's going to pull the high out of the UK and Ireland and up towards Greenland here. So if we look at this uh, uh, tweet here by, uh, by Extreme Meteo, you can see here um, the systems all marked out here very nicely, and it's the it's the the, the change in the Rosby wave that is uh, going to create this chain reaction, so to speak, right away across the entire northern hemisphere. Uh, before we look at this, let's have a look at the 850 temperatures, and you can see here the fluid nature of the atmosphere very nicely in this uh, chart here. Obviously, representative of the temperature at 5,000 feet over top of the pole so obviously this is north america greenland the north atlantic uk ireland europe and then right across to asia so obviously we're beginning to really start to build the cold reservoir over the top of the pole unusually weak mean zonal winds as already explained in yesterday's video we're building the snowpack across siberia where we've got an unusually strong high that is over the north of asia at the moment and that is potentially what's creating this frictional effect and slowing down the mean zonal winds up in the stratosphere. But it, obviously it's a, it's a complex situation, but you can see the nature of the tropospheric polar vortex here. We've got this um, quite uh, you know stretched out uh, cold pool. We've not got it bundled up. We've obviously got still a lot of residual heat within the, uh, you know, even the middle latitude pattern. North America, for example, we're seeing summer-like warmth. We're seeing some, um, you know, unusually warm temperatures in several locations within the middle latitude pattern. We've obviously got tropical systems, and these tropical systems are feeding heat north towards the pole. And as you can see here, as we play through uh, the, uh, the 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 ripple effect the chain of uh, of um of cold and warm uh, lobes within the uh, hemisphere so mid latitudes interacting with the high latitude pattern if we look at the 850 temperatures here you can see uh, how we have got quite a lot of unusually warmer up into the high latitudes this is obviously off the gfs model if we go back to the current period not so much we've got the a much more um uh, you know contrasting uh, of air masses here uh, but both in the middle latitudes as well as the high latitudes but as we play it through here you can see these systems transferring warmth 
up towards the Arctic region here. And that's going to force higher pressure to then build into the Arctic region here. You can see these parcels of warmer from the subtropics getting drawn northwards here. And it is the tropical systems that are doing that. So if we look at this tweet here, fascinating. Um, wait a minute. Put it into English. Fascinating always to see influences and interactions of tropical cyclone systems with the jet stream circulation and the mid to high latitudes. A photograph from Sunday shows the very clear influence of X Halong and Priscilla, Nacri and Jerry also risk strongly influencing the wave train within the northern hemisphere that's why i take great uh, precautions not to analyze the situation solely through the lens of uh, the usual parameters mjo angular momentum and uh, b s i s o etc so basically uh, what they're getting at here is that uh, it's not always the mjo that is uh, the, the the primary driver and also angular momentum etc etc it uh, when you get into this time of the year the tropics an active tropics in the in the month of October can sometimes bring on early winter, you know, November, uh, even in the December as well. We can get some of these cold Decembers. It was Joe Bastardi that they said late season tropical uh, activity within the Atlantic, for example, can sometimes bring a cold, uh, you know, spell in the month of uh, November, but also into the month of December. It'll be interesting to see if we can get early winter for both Europe as well as North America. I showed you in yesterday's video how there is uh, evidence to support that we could see a significant cold shot into North America as we move into the month of November. So we'll wait and see what happens. But I want to also show uh, this here. And I want to draw your attention to the, the big strong area of high pressure that is uh, over uh, much of Russia at the moment. That is likely causing some sort of warming from uh, transfer of energy from troposphere up into the stratosphere, creating that warming within the stratosphere, the weakness in the mean zone of winds, etc. Because of the how high to the north this anomalous ridge of high pressure is. Now, as we continue to play through, we've got a, a pretty deep trough here at this moment in time. This is the upcoming five days. This is five day increments of the GFS ensemble. And just keep in mind the tropical systems that are in the Pacific east of Japan, they're going to no uh, move northwards. And notice what happens as we play through these five-day increments, the change in the pattern over North America. And then we'll look at the Atlantic in just a second here. But notice here that we're starting to see this pattern change and we'll get much more. Instead of ridging, we're starting to see a trough develop here over the Northeast Pacific as the jet becomes stronger out of uh, Asia, across the, the North Pacific, as these tropical systems then move north, they're strengthening that gradient between the cold of the north, warm to the south, and we're becoming much more flatter with that jet crossing the North Pacific. Now, sometimes you could look at that and go, well, is that going to reflect over the North Atlantic? Or are we going to start to see a strengthening of the jet stream over the Atlantic? Well, remember, if we go back to the upcoming five days, we've got this big block of high pressure over the North Atlantic. If we then focus purely on the Atlantic now, watch what happens with this change in the pattern over the North Pacific. Look at the North Atlantic. We're starting to see that area of high pressure. We're starting to see a more stretched out trough far to the south over the North Atlantic here. So we're starting to see the jet getting forced further south. But the high then starts to build northwards up into Greenland here. And that is quite interesting. So this is now the day 12 through 16. And it's this chain reaction of Pacific typhoons recurving that then changes the overall pattern over North America, in turn over the Atlantic and then over Europe um, if we look at the jet stream, this is quite an interesting one to look at as well. If we go back to the current situation, you've got obviously uh, NACRI and uh, the other system that I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter anyway, but the, the, these systems are going to then move northwards here 
forcing that jet over the Pacific to become stronger. Remember, we've got some very, very cold air over eastern Russia at the moment here, minus 20s, for example, very warmer across uh, you know eastern China, for example. And then we've got the tropical systems, these bundles of warm heat, latent heat that is getting released into the atmosphere, forcing the jet stream become, to become stronger. And then that is starting to change the uh, pattern. It's starting to push the energy through the Pacific over North America. And then in turn, we're starting to see changes take place over the Atlantic. But interestingly enough, the Pacific is quite different to what the Atlantic is doing because of that strong high over the UK, over Western areas of Europe here at the moment. That then is forcing, as you start to uh, uh, transfer that e uh, energy eastwards across the Pacific and across North America, it's it, rather than forcing a strong jet, it's actually just forcing the high to then build northwards. And you can see that quite nicely reflected in the 850 uh, uh, 500 millibar pattern, sorry, over the uh, over the northern hemisphere. So this is the upcoming five days then looking down over the top of the pole. And you can see here as we play through these uh, five day increments, watch what happens with the height field over the Arctic. You start to see the pressure building up into Greenland here. We've got this trough over uh, Scandinavia. I would expect a trough to kind of start to kind of build westwards here as we see that high retrograde up towards Greenland. So quite an interesting um, overall situation. If we look at the, the European Atlantic view in terms of the overview, you can see also what has taken place here in terms of that high. So see here the high, like I say, building in as we progress towards the weekend and then it really just becomes anchored across the UK and Ireland. It doesn't really go anywhere all the way through till the back half of next week. And then in comes Jerry over the Atlantic. What is going to happen with that? That is going to be the open question. We're seeing the warmth getting lifted north to the west of the UK and Ireland here. So we're transferring that heat out of the subtropics into the Arctic region, building the heights further north. And we've got quite a complex overall situation. It's the distribution of warm versus cold that's going to be the question. I think we're going to see big flips between unusual warmth and uh, some colder weather coming in as we progress through the, the rest of this month. And, excuse me, into the uh, month of November. But you can see here that we've got this fight between warmth and cold showing up in the modeling here. And obviously when you've got this complex interplay this transfer of heat northwards uh, the models struggle to then uh, know where to distribute that warm versus cold so uh, complex stuff but they uh, I, I wanted to show you that today because we obviously have a relatively quiet pattern in terms of high pressure dominating we don't have storm amy we've got the uh, a very different pattern now becoming established over uh, this part of the world and um, I wanted to kind of just show you that we, we'll look at this in more detail day by day so uh, stay tuned I hope you're enjoying the, the wide variety of content here on the channel be sure to hit that like button share with your friends and family and uh, most importantly hit that subscribe button uh, as the channel continues to grow people are becoming more interested as we head towards winter there's going to be plenty of winter chat coming up in the days to come. So stay tuned. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And I'll see you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.